and there's many of people who have a lot of misunderstanding about Jesus and who he is in our world today. Uh, there's a lot of people, cults and so forth, that they, they thrive on half-truths uh, by paying only lip service, only lip service to our Lord and Savior that we know as Jesus today. Folks, it's got to be more than lip service. It's got to be more than just saying, I love you, Lord, or, or you know, Jesus uh, is a, uh, the one that we need. It's got to be with our whole lives. And there are those this morning or this evening uh, who call themselves Christian, but they, they do not respond to Jesus as being the divine Son of God. They ignore the fact that He is the second person of the Trinity. In fact, they ignored the Trinity altogether. There are those this evening that believe but who are not excited about Jesus. If you can't get excited about Jesus as we felt in our service tonight, then as I say, you better get your Jesus meter checked out because there's something wrong. We need to get excited about the things that Christ does in our lives. And so tonight, we also want to know that there are people in our world today, still today, in our churches still today, that genuinely love the Lord. And everything in their lives revolves around Him. He doesn't revolve around their lives, but He is the center of their lives and everything they do focuses. And so, and so we got to acknowledge, even though there's all these others that go in all different directions, there are still those, amen, that love the Lord with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, and they serve Him the best of their ability. And so tonight we're going to look and take a closer look at God's word, word and the goal of getting to know Jesus a little bit better this evening. I mean, who was this man who came as a child in a manger and, and ministered and done all the things that he'd done and made such an impact on our world today? Don't, I mean, our, don't say he didn't make any, a calendar is based on him. I mean, there's just so much of an impact that he made in our world today. And so let's get together this evening in God's Word. I'm not going to ask you to stand this evening, but let's read from John chapter 1 this evening, uh, beginning with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Not through Buddha, not through some other mystical God or whatever it might be, but through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. He was not that light, John the Baptist, but was sent to bear witness to that light, who is what? Jesus Christ. And so John came to give witness to that light that, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He, verse 10, he was in the world and the world was made... Through, think about this for a moment. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him and he came to his own and his own did not receive him. And, and, and yet, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. <laughs> There's something about being adopted into the family of God. 
There's something about being born again. It is a new life that we begin in Christ Jesus when we accept Him as our Lord and Savior. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John bore witness of Him and cried out, saying, This is He of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Christ or Jesus Christ. And no one has seen God at any time, and the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. And now this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And so he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And I, he said, and, and they asked him, what then, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? And he answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? That we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. And now those who were sent were from the Pharisees, and they asked him, saying, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor a prophet? And John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. <laughs> but there stands one among you whom you do not know, it is he coming after me is preferred before me whose sandal straps I am not worthy to loose. And these things were done in Bether Barbara beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. And the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. It speaks volumes in our hearts tonight. What a, what a passage of scripture we have before us tonight. So help us to open it up. Help us, Lord, to, to proclaim what you want us to hear tonight and be obedient as your children tonight, Lord. For what good is it if we just receive it in our, our minds and not put it to action in our lives? Help us, Lord, to be obedient tonight. We thank you and we praise you. In Christ's name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. There are two important language notes to consider here in this passage. The first one is the verb was. It's used three times to describe continuous action without regard to beginning or end. And then word. Word speaks of the essential nature of God. It is God Himself making a disclosure of who He is. And so, as we look closer to the One who came, the first thing we need to see is that Jesus is divine. We cannot forget that, that He came from the Father. He is divine. He's not only divine, but He's human. We understand the human aspect of it. We understand what it means to be human. We understand that, that to be perfectly human, we would be like what? Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, right? What, I mean, do you, do you not hear people say, well, I'm only human to make excuses for their shortcomings. I'm only human. Well, if you were only human, you'd be like Adam and Eve before the fall. Amen? You hear what I'm saying? You would be like Adam and Eve before the fall. You would be in the perfect holiness that God had created them to be. And you would be walking in the light always as Jesus is in the light. So not, let's not use that excuse, okay? Let's not use the excuse, well, I'm only human. Well, that's putting God down. Because God created us in the image. In the image of God, He created male and female. And so we've got to understand tonight that, that, that God is, is divine, but He's also human. John 1.1 1, 1 says this, that in the beginning was the Word, there's that Word again, the Word, and the Word was what? With God, and the Word 
was God. In other words, that was Jesus in the beginning, and He was with God, and He is God. Amen? He is divine tonight, folks. He is the Son of the living God. In verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh. He became a little baby in the manger. He was born of God, and but He became a man. He became like you and me. If you want to know what ants are doing and how they live, what do you got to do? You got to become an ant. Amen? You've got to get down on your, all, all the eight legs or six legs or however many legs they have, and you've got to become an ant. You've got to be like one of them. Well, for God to understand what we are dealing with, He sent Jesus to be one of us. And, and He dwelt among us. He not only came, but He dwelt. He lived. He breathed. He, he, he associated. He fellowship with other human beings. And He beheld, and we beheld His glory, and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. They understood there was something different about this man, Jesus. They understood that this second Adam was different than what the first Adam was. He was divine. The Gospel introduces Jesus in different ways. The Gospels, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they introduce him in, in separate or different ways. In Matthew chapter 1 through 16, go read it sometime and enjoy your devotion through it because he's introduced to her as Joseph's son. Okay, it says in verse 1, and I'm not going to read all 16 verses of it, okay? But the book and the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot Judah and, and brothers and, and bro so forth and so on begot, 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 begot and what we're saying here, what, what Matthew is trying to say to you and me tonight is that, that Jesus is the son of, of Joseph as well because he came from the lineage it says in verse 15 Nathan begot Jacob and Jacob begot Joseph the husband of Mary of whom was born Jesus who is called the Christ and I want to tell you something there's something special about a stepdad there's something special about someone who is willing to step in and take a son or a daughter that's not his own blood and that's what Joseph did he was from the lineage but if you also follow the lineage of Mary it also goes back to David that's what it's so great about God's plan. It's perfect right down to the T. And then in Luke, he is Mary's son conceived by the Holy, Holy Ghost. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin... See, See, we get here, here, there's a lineage again. The virgin's name was Mary. And, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you, young woman. But then he saw him and was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you, for you have found favor with God. What words to hear, amen? To t be told by an angel that you have been found favor with God. Wow. A young teenager. So don't, don't, don't tell me teenagers can't serve the Lord today. Don't tell me that teenagers aren't a very vital part of the church today because Mary was a teenager and she carried the very son of God and 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 she conceived her conceived him in her womb and he she brought forth a son and he she he shall call his name Jesus and he will be great and he will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and for his kingdom there will be no end and then Mary said to the angel how can this be since i do not know a man and the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you, and therefore you, therefore also that Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. And now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived in her son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who, has, who was called barren. For the, with God nothing is impossible. 
Nothing is impossible. We, we got to understand the virgin conception is something vital to the Christian faith. We can't let that doctrine ever slip away, my friend. If you open your book to Isaiah 7, 14, and if it doesn't say that a virgin shall conceive, I would just get rid of that Bible. I wouldn't follow it anymore. Because, okay, that, ver that word for virgin in, the, in Isaiah can be translated as young woman. And some tra Bible translations have translated it as, a, as young woman. Now, I'm not saying that whole Bible might be mistranslated, but my goodness, that takes away the prophecy of Jesus. If you take the, the virgin away and put young woman in there, you've taken the prophecy away because Jesus refers to Isaiah. And so how in the world can... Uh, come on, preacher, how in the world are you going to tell me that a virgin can conceive? Well, there is nothing impossible with God. I, I just read tonight on, on Facebook, I, 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 I really... you got to pray for me. I, I was working a little bit on the message for the funeral on Tuesday, and, and uh, I, I got on the webpage and looked at the obituary, and then I... I started going down through. That's why I was said to the. That's why I said earlier, I, I'm funeraled out. I started looking at the obituaries of people who had died in the last, just the last few months of the first, the year 219. Not only 70 and 80 a year old, but 20 year olds, and death has no pickings. It it just overshadows everybody and my heart start, I started crying how many of them didn't know the Lord how many of them didn't know the Lord and, 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 and I, that's why I said I'm funeraled out but, but church there's nothing impossible with God he can penetrate the hearts that are hardened as I mentioned this morning you know, with the fig tree. Come on, give him one more year, the gardener said. Let me, let me put some fertilizer around it. Let me, let me attend to it a little bit better this, 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 this next coming year. And before we cut it down, let's give it another chance. God's patient with us. Praise the Lord. He's patient with you and me. And then in Mark... Well, I better get to 38. And then Mary said, Behold, maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. <laughs> I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your word and to your way. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I uh, I messed my wife up in singing this morning. She says, Toby, you just don't know how how bad you can't hear your own tune coming out of your mouth. <laughs> she said, you messed me up. <laughs> I said, I was just trying to help you. <laughs> kind of help she doesn't need let it be your way Lord to your will and to your way and then in Mark Jesus is considered the son of God Mark 1.1 1, 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ the son of God and, and the reason the, the gospels do that they were they were written for different audiences Matthew was written more toward the Jewish people who had to understand that Jesus is the Messiah because he come from the lineage of David and so forth and so on. And so Mark is saying here that he is the, the son of the living God. In verse 15 of, of, of John, we, we reread that, that uh, verse seven, chapter 17, verse 5, I'm sorry. And now, O, o Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had but which with you before the world was and since Jesus is God, we will want to pay serious attention to Him 
and the life that he shows in the scripture. So Jesus, my friend, is divine. He is. This is the one who cares. The divine living Christ. But not only is he divine church, but he is light. This, this is so deep. Light is so deep. We take light for granted. But when you really think about light, it blows my mind. It blows my mind how light is. In John chapter 1, verse 5, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And then in verse 8 and 9, he was not that light, talking about John the Baptist. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world Jesus is the light of the world and what is the role of the light what is the what what does light do, do? it drives back darkness it drives back darkness it exposes what's in the dark Amen. You can't, you might stumble over things when it's dark, but when you shine a light, you see what's in the dark and it keeps you from tripping. It keeps you from falling. It keeps you from backsliding. It exposes the light. It removes uncertainty in our lives. We, we, I, I know I've talked to a few people who, who have been through some difficult times lately. And, and, and we talked about, even as, as a pastor, when I heard that word cancer, let me tell you what, things change. And, and you really grab a hold of your faith and you say, Lord, I need you. The message I preached three, four Sundays ago was from my heart. It's, you know, I, I thought you said that God wouldn't give you more than you can handle. My friend, as, as who was it? I think uh, PK said it this morning. Yeah, yeah, he won't give you, or he will give you more than you can handle, but you'll never face anything in life more than he can handle. Amen? But to, un to be there and to sense that and have those emotions... You guys understand, we talked, we, I, I, I sensed it in that message. It, 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 you understood me, Loretta. You understood what I was talking about. He will give us more than we can handle, but He's the light of the world and He will drive back. He will remove the uncertainties in our lives that keeps us moving forward. And He will show us a way of safe travel. Jesus is the light that leads us into the Father's presence. There is no way to come to the Father except through the light of Jesus Christ. We have to accept Him as Lord and Savior. And yes, Gary, I can't talk without moving my hands. <laughs> I've been up here trying to hold on to the pulpit, but it's not working. Gene was saying something about earlier before the service where we were talking and I was there doing this and Gary says, he can't talk without moving his hands. I said, you're right, brother. You see, he's saying that this is the way to the Father. If you want to get to the Father, the only... Hey, Oprah, I hope you're listening to this message on YouTube. There is only one way to the Father, and that's through Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 30, 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it <laughs> this is the way there's only one way that you and I are going to get to heaven there's only one way that you and I are going to ever be able to see the loved ones of ours that have gone before us and that is to walk in the way of the light when you turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left whichever way we go my friends we need to walk in the light no matter what direction we go. You cannot make it so, listen to me, you cannot make it so dark, but what light can drive it back. I've heard people being in the desert, in Iraq. Steve uh, Brake, a, a, a real good friend of ours and a person that uh, was in the, in the Valley View Church that, that we were at. And he was in the desert and 
And he, he said people got lost in the desert going out to use the restroom because as soon as they shut that door to their, to their little hooch or whatever, it was pitch dark. And if, if you didn't have a light or something, you'd get lost. He says, you will wave your hand right in front of your face and you can't see it. But my friend, there is no darkness so great that if you don't, if you shine light on it, it's, it's, it's going to cease to be dark. It's going to cease to be dark. And my friend, that tells me one thing. There's hope for everybody. There's hope for everybody. I don't care what somebody has done. I don't care how far they've strayed away from God. I don't care how dark they're... If they don't harden their heart against the things of God, the Holy Spirit can penetrate their heart and turn them around. Jesus, my friend, is divine. He is light. But He's also the fullness that we need in our lives. Jesus is fullness. John 1 verse 16 and of his fullness we have all received in grace for grace one of the characteristics of the gospel is the completeness that is found in Jesus my friend the cross that is behind me is empty because Jesus completed the plan of salvation I don't need Jesus to still be on the cross because what he done on the cross has been completed. He was taken off of that cross. He was put in the borrowed tomb. He was, he was uh, laid there for three days and on the third day, he rose again. That's why we celebrate on Sundays. That's why we are here celebrating our risen Savior today. He is complete. I don't need a book from Joseph Smith. You hear what I'm saying? I don't need the Book of Mormons to tell me more about what Jesus wants to do in my life. I have everything I need in God's Word that He's already provided for me. This Book of God that we've put together from councils coming together, it is all I need. Jesus is all... What's the songwriter say? Jesus is all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all he, he he's real to me. He's real to me. Jesus is real to me. He's all I need, my friend. And and what Jesus is involved in is more than adequate. Whatever he's done, whatever he's been, wherever he's been, wherever he's at, it's adequate for your life today. His miracles of, of, of healing people and raising Lazarus from the dead and, and multiplying bread and fish, all those things, changing water into lie or wine, he is adequate for what we need in our lives today. We don't need anything else. We have the fullness of Christ. I, you know, it, it cracks me up. A full gospel ministry or full gospel man we've been preaching full gospel for centuries if you're not preaching the full gospel you're not preaching if you're not preaching the full word of god you're not preaching you can't leave part of the bible out it's there for us it's there for example it's there for you and me to to to, to guide us and it's a road map to life and you need it and i need it we need the full gospel we need the full scripture that God has provided for us so he's divine he's light he's fullness but Jesus and you've done it tonight and you've done it today he's worthy of our worship he is worthy of our worship John 1 15 says John bore witness of him and cried out saying this was he whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. John, the writer John, uses the uh, testimony of John the Baptist to show and exalt Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was exalting Jesus Christ. He, he must increase, I must decrease, right? It's what John the Baptist said. He understood who Jesus was, that he must be exalted, that he must be worshipped. 
And then in, again in verses 26 and 27, he quotes John the Baptist lifting Jesus up again. And John answered and saying, them saying, I was I baptized with water, but the one who there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he who's coming after me is preferred before me, whose sandal straps I am not worthy to lose. And my friend, that Jesus is the one that John worshipped. He 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 exalted, he lifted up some people. Some people come to him as though they, they're doing him a favor. My friends, you might as well not even come to him. You're not doing Jesus a favor by coming to him. You are doing yourself a favor by accepting what Jesus Christ has done for you. The question is, what is your attitude toward him? What is my attitude toward him? Jesus is worthy to be the Lord of our lives. Our, is our attitude that tonight? Are we willing and wanting to do that in our lives tonight? He's divine. He's light. He's fullness. He's worthy of our worship. But my friend, Jesus is God's forgiving sacrifice. This would all be for naught if Jesus didn't fulfill the, the, what He came to do. In John 1, 9, or 29, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward Him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. The word Lamb. You know, it says in Genesis that God made tunics for Adam and Eve, coverings for Adam and Eve. It doesn't tell you what he used, but somewhere in my little, small, finite mind, I believe it was a lamb. I, was, I believe it was a lamb. The lamb had a special meaning to the Jews because a lamb's life that was offered up in sacrifice in the temple meant that that Jewish person could leave forgiven. Jesus, my friend, is the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. We don't have to go to the temple every year and offer sacrifices. Jesus paid it all. He's complete. He's fullness. We don't need another Jesus. We don't need another revelation. We, don't, we have all we need in Christ Jesus. There is a solution to the sin problems in our lives. We look at our world today and we say our world's got a sin problem. But do we, as I said this morning, do we examine our own lives? Do we get serious with our own self? Do we ask God to look inside? and say, Lord, search me. Know my way. I mean, Second Chronicles, it tells us that God's people who are called by His name need to turn from their wicked ways. The only way we're going to have our land healed, the only way that we're going to see America get back to the things of God is for the church to repent. The church to get right the church to be witnessing, the church to be reaching out, the church to be selfless in everything it does. We've got loved ones. Randy, I think, mentioned it about prayer. How often we not mention them in our prayers. The most important thing of our prayers that we lift up to God in our prayer service, in church services, is the, the, the soul of those individuals. If they got cancers, we want to pray for that, but if they don't know Jesus, as if they got cancer and they don't know Jesus, that's worse. Because if they got cancer and they know Jesus, 
Woo! They're going to get healed. No if, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> if it's not in this world, it's going to be when they cross over the Jordan. No more pain, no more suffering, no more partying over there. And so the solution to the sin problem in our lives in the world is Jesus, God's Lamb. He is the answer. And there is, there is freedom for us because of the price that He paid at Calvary for what He did on the cross, for the suffering and the pain and the whiplash and the, and the thorn, crown of thorns that was placed on His head and all those in the mockery and the spitting on and all those things that happened to our Lord and Savior. There is hope. There is, there, there is a problem to the sin in people's lives and it's Jesus, the Lamb of God. And the one who came, my friend, the one who came made a dramatic difference in the lives of John's readers. And he can make a difference in the lives of individuals today. Your family, your loved ones, your co-workers. Jesus can make a dramatic difference in their lives. He can heal the drug addict or the sex addict or, or, the, or, 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 or the alcoholic or, or, or the, the messed up mind of what kind of sex I really am. Uh, he can heal the brokenhearted. He is the Lamb of God. He came in the flesh. He cares about you. He cares about me. He cares about those in the world today. And John the Baptist directed his hearers to Jesus, and many followed Jesus. The question is, what will you do with Jesus? What will you do with Him tonight will you follow him will you acknowledge that he's the answer to your problems will you acknowledge that he, he if you let him shine his light in your heart in your life he's going to re expose and reveal the darkness that might be there my friends we not only need to be saved we need to be sanctified we need the old carnal nature rooted out of our hearts and the only way that's going to happen is with God's light shining into those areas of our heart and being receptive to what God wants to do in your life that's the only way he's not going he's a perfect gentleman he's not going to force anything on anyone you've got to be willing to open your heart and allow him to search it tonight Father, we thank You tonight for Your Word. We thank You that You are the one who cares about us, the one who, who has done whatever is necessary to get us to see that You are what we need in our lives. Father, there's sometimes we ask why, but maybe it's an opportunity for us to draw closer. So help us tonight, Father, to see what it is that you want to do in our hearts tonight. And maybe someone here tonight, Lord, you've spoken to their hearts. Before we dismiss tonight, maybe they want to just get up. Maybe you're there tonight and God has spoken to you about something. It doesn't mean that you're a sinner. It doesn't mean... Maybe you just need to get alone with God tonight. Maybe a little bit of time. Would you, would you just slip out of the pew tonight? And come. We'll give you a moment to tarry. We'll tarry with you for a moment. Anyone at all. Father, we thank you for each one here tonight. Life can be difficult, but we serve one who is greater than life, who's overcome. Help us to rely on Him. May we rely on Him. May we be determined to do that in our lives tonight. Go with us as we depart from here. May you send your blessings with us. May we come back to the next appointed service. In Christ's name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Shake hands with one another and you may be dismissed.